Early Morning, Chapter 28 A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction Written and Narrated by Miro Rose With artwork for the opening and thumbnail image by Cat Saturn Art on Instagram. You can find a link to Cat Saturn Art in the description box, as well as links to the prior 27 chapters. If you're still listening, comment, take me out, and please enjoy Early Morning, Chapter 28. Marinette Dupang Chang, Paris, France, 9.20 p.m. Adrian tried to make Marinette feel better throughout the rest of the evening, but all efforts fell short. Marinette found herself inconsolable. Nothing helped, and she couldn't help herself. How could anyone fix that? Take me out, Marinette said, wiping her nose on her cardigan. She felt Adrian's hand on the small of her back. Of here? Or, like, out on the town? Anywhere! It didn't matter, as long as she didn't keep wallowing. Sometimes, to get out of a circular crying spell, you need to leave the place where it started like breaking an enchantment. Um, okay. He slid his hand into hers and helped her off the couch. I guess there's somewhere we could still go. What do you mean still? We're not adults yet, technically, and it is a school night for you, so... Adrian cut himself off and Marinette realized he was tiptoeing around her lack of a work study due to her amnesia. She'd been able to fill at the bakery this far as an emergency placement, but retaking everything she'd lost made her all but a regular student again. Okay. She wiped her face again. Whatever you say. Maybe the reply came off as bitter or sarcastic, but it wasn't meant to be. Marinette didn't have the energy to correct herself. She let him lead her by the hand, turning a street here and there until they ended up at... The Bourgeois Hotel? Marinette stared at the gaudy building, jaw slacked, before turning to Adrian in disgust. You think Chloe Bourgeois is going to make me feel better? What? No. There's a bowling alley in the basement. Oh, that tracked. You think a few rounds of bowling will make me feel better? I don't see how it could make this situation any worse. He had a point. Fine, but you pay for the food. Adrian didn't respond, but Marinette caught his smile in the security mirror on the way in, and it struck her like a slap. They'd probably done this together before. Bowling at the Bourgeois Hotel. Him. And her. The thought almost made her turn around, but the concierge greeted them just in time to put a stop to her impulsive thought. Soon enough, she was in a room that was so out of place it was jarring. A bowling alley with white couches and bamboo flooring, complete with a rattan table for drinks, seemed like something out of a dystopian fever dream. Wasn't the point of bowling to be surrounded by neon colors and reheated appetizers? Instead, a worker brought out a plate of hors d'oeuvres that Marinette only saw when her parents teamed up with other restaurants for the extra fancy events. Do I even want to know? Marinette asked, picking up a piece of meat slathered in what appeared to be caviar. Adrian barked out a laugh and pulled out his phone. I'll order us pizza. And what? Spit on the bourgeois hospitality. Marinette looked up to see Chloe Bourgeois crossing the threshold, heels clicking, and did her best to not roll her eyes. Instinct told her to snap back. But Ladybug did tell her that, unbelievably, she and Chloe had a somewhat amicable relationship. Chloe... Be so for real right now, Adrian quipped. 
You sent caviar because you know Marinette doesn't like it. Not my fault Baker Girl doesn't have refined tastes. Too many carbs growing up, not enough exposure to protein. Okay. What little faith Marinette had in Ladybug from her letter to her was now gone. At least when I smell like vanilla, it isn't a fake byproduct, Marinette said, turning to smirk at her middle school arch nemesis. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Chloe turned her head toward her shoulder, and the little sniff she took wasn't lost on Marinette. Anyway, what are you doing here? Marinette looked at Adrian, wondering how much they should say. I wanted to take her mind off Tiki for a bit. The Kwame? Chloe set her purse down next to the appetizers and started rifling through it. What do you need that squeaker for? Oh, sugar and cookies. Marin had wanted to smack this girl. That's my partner you're talking about, she cut in. Yes, and? Chloe pulled out her compact, shooting a disgusted look her way. Didn't answer my question. We, um... Adrian returned Marinette's look before continuing, as if asking for permission. We can't get her to wake up. Huh? From the miraculous. The ladybug earrings? Marinette thumbed the miraculous jewelry box in her front pocket. I don't see how it's any of your concern, Chloe. It's not like your Kwame won't wake up. She scoffed. I don't have a Kwame anymore. No thanks to the pest you used to be. She pulled a velvety red jewelry box from inside the depths of her purse. But I can help you with yours, if you'd like. Please, there's no way you could help us. It was Marinette's turn to scoff. Any idea why you can't get Tiki out of those earrings of yours? Marinette bit her lip. Flashes of anger burning her stomach lining. Trust Chloe? <laughs> yeah, right. It wouldn't be the first thing Ladybug was wrong about. Still, as much as her pride screamed at her to walk out of here, Marinette could drown out the sound if it meant getting Tiki back. No, she admitted, looking away. No, I have no idea. It's because those aren't your earrings. She snapped her eyes back to Chloe. She had to be lying. She had to be. Plug said he felt her presence from the box, Adrian cut in. The box is real, but not the earrings. You really think Ladybug would leave one of the most powerful magic items in the world in the care of a heartbroken idiot and a girl without a memory? Please. You're lying, Marinette said. She wanted Chloe to be right for once, but she couldn't accept it. Not knowing where Tiki was might be worse than not being able to wake her up. Seeing is believing, isn't it, Du Peng Chang? Chloe tucked a loose strand behind her ear and let her fingers linger behind her earlobe. Spots on. Okay. Marinette was wrong. Not knowing where Tiki was and not being able to wake her up weren't the worst options. The worst option was in front of her, sitting with her legs crossed and a smug smile. The worst option was Chloe Bourgeois as the current owner of the Ladybug Miraculous. Thank you so much for listening. Um, chapter 29's on the way. If you're still listening, comment Chloe's Ladybug. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!